Hi, this is Lauren Lukens. I'm here with Don Hall, and this is a video for Don Hall Works. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about glazing uh, squeeze art and uh, spraying glaze. And this is the piece that I'm going to be starting with. So this is the piece I'm going to be working on. This is a thrown and altered piece. It's been bisqued and I have glazed the interior with a clear glaze. I'll do a little bit of sanding before I start just to get little boogers off as everyone does. And then I'll use a pencil to draw the design I want on. And so it's graphite. Since it goes onto the piece, it's carbon. It'll just burn away. And you don't have to worry about anything like that. So I'll just do a little give myself some guidance as to where I want the lines to be. And then I'll use a squeeze bottle that has a very fine tip. And this is a glaze. Uh, it's a clear glaze that's the same glaze as the interior, but it has about 10% mason stain added to it. Got to make sure they, they work. One of the problems with these squeeze bottles is that they very often clog. So I have a little wire. You can buy this at uh, Home Depot. Just It comes and sticks. And use this to clean the tip periodically. Very important to keep that going. There we go. And here's a red. This is a, a red mason stain. It's a cadmium uh, inclusion stain that gives a really beautiful red and it's also mixed in about 10 percent with the clear glaze there we go this is now ready to be sprayed I'll do a eventually I'll do a similar pa pattern on the other side but in the meantime, let's go ahead and spray this one. This is my spray booth. I've had a lot of spray booths in my life. I always built my own. I've gotten pretty good at this. And there's some details about this you might want to know. Starters, I have, I'm using these HVLP, that's high volume, low pressure, uh, gravity feed spray guns. And I used to buy ones from Iwata. They were Japanese and they were $200 a piece. And now I've switched to these Chinese cheapies. They're called a K3. And you can find them, I think you can find them in Harbor Freight now. And they're about $16 a piece. So I buy them by the half dozen. And they wear out, I throw them away. It's not great. You can't get parts for them. But it's, it's a great little thing. So I have a series of these in, in sequence. They're all hooked up to a manifold uh, and uh, they're all on a, uh, on a regulator. And it runs at a very low pressure, so it doesn't take that much. The sprayer, I have a, a the, the compressor and the evacuation fan are outside of the building, so you barely hear them. I'm going to turn the, the uh, evacuation fan on right now. It's fairly low impact. I'm ready to uh, load the, the glaze into the sprayer right now. And I use, I put everything into jar, into a containers like this so I can easily mix them by, with a shake. And then I'll load glaze into the sprayer and I screen it with a T strainer as it goes in. It's very important because it's so easy to clog. 
This is a blue glaze, and it's a clear glaze that has about 2% um, so, uh, of a mason stain in it. Ordinarily, I would be wearing a mask when I do this, but it's tough to talk through a mask. So it's, it does a pretty good job of evacuating, and that's a real important thing. This is a, a little return air thing. It closes off the amount of space that is draw, air is drawing from, and I have arm holes cut into this cardboard so I can manip manipulate it, but it closes off the total space around. It's a, a very important part of this uh, design. All right, time to spray. I put no wax on the bottom because I'm just going to wipe it back off, but I have done this kind of a fancy cut off with a wiggle wire and I want to show that off. So I'll, I'll clean it up later and you'll see what I'm doing. Time to put another glaze in. This will be just the clear. So, Lauren, you, slip, you switch to another gun now, right? I, I put it in a different gun. You, if you don't want to have more than one gun, you can just pour one out and put another one in. But for my purposes, a lot of times I'm using multiple glazes and I like to have, I'll load the guns all up with a different glaze in each one. So now I'll spray the clear. Right over the decoration. Now, I'll clean the bottom. Just wipe the glaze off. There's never any need to wax the bottom of pots. All you have to do is make sure that you get the glaze off. And it washes off just fine. It saves a step, um, the waxing. Some people find waxing and preparing as a preparation for glazing to be meditated, but I kind of got over that about 30 years ago. So that's ready to go and it shows the decoration of the wiggle wire. Okay, so here's the finished piece again. You can see that the clear glaze is here and the blue glaze is all the way around the outside edge. And the, the squeeze art comes through just beautifully. This is Cone 6, it's a B-mix fired in an electric kiln. So this is another piece I'm going to decorate for you. This is what I call a low bowl. It's been thrown and put, the rim is pushed down pretty far. I have it set up that I can put a, a wire on the back and it can be hung on the wall or a lot of different uses. But I'll show you how I decorated this one. So this is the back. It has a fair amount of interest in its own right. 
And on the front, I have one, two, three, four different glazes, and I'll be showing you that too. Be putting this onto this smaller piece, and I'll just do do the same kind of a of a notion that I did before. I'll do a little drawing, and then use my black glaze. That this needs to be the cleaned out so it's not squeezing. Come on. There we go. And my signature. And these glazes will be sprayed over the top of the squeeze art. It's also possible to do the glazing and then do the squeeze art over the glazing and you get a crisper look, but it clogs these um, these bottles very easily. And so I've switched over to putting the, the squeeze art on first and then spraying over it. So I'll do a little drawing of what I want to do to give myself a guide. And I'm more or less just duplicating what's what's on the piece uh, that's already finished here, just so you get an idea what it looks like. This is a glazing style I've developed over many years, kind of a free form. It has a little bit of a, a Asian, perhaps, um, it looks a little bit like a calligraphy. Just worked on it and got you you, it's a free form sort of thing and you can do about anything you want. So here we go. This is a yellow. It's also uh, an inclusion stain, cadmium and exclusion stain, inclusion stain. Whoops. Whoops. Nice thing about um, doing it this way is if you make a, a boo boo like that, you can just wipe it off and start again. See if I can avoid that mistake again. There we go. That's more like it. You wouldn't be able to um, make these alterations if, if I had sprayed the glaze on first. They have a, uh, an orientation that is based on um, horizon lines. We're all hardwired to understand horizon lines and it's good to take, take advantage of that fact. A little red, a little dab will do you on red, but it is sure an effective color to use. And I'll use a lot of three dot things because that's another thing that we're kind of hardwired to. Three is a good number to pay attention to. Alright, there's a nice abstract design. Time to put some glaze on it. Alright, I'm ready to spray the piece that I just did the squeeze art on. Guns with all the glazes I'm going to need. It's going to be four glazes. I'm ready to spray. Alright, I'm going to start spraying. This is the black. Right now I'm going to spray this, uh, it's a rutile mat. Alright, there's the side. And 
once again, I did not wax this piece. The problem with waxing and spraying is that if you spray over wax, it rivulets and it makes a mess. So it really works better if you don't wax. I'll just clean the foot off with a sponge. Kind of uh, rudimentary for the start, but I always check it before it goes into the kiln. All right, flip this guy over. And I'll spray the other side. I'll start off with black again, and it's kind of a horizon line thing that I do here. Teal mat. You have to kind of keep track of where you are. is that you can have thicker and thinner areas on the same piece. You have absolute control. You can put any glaze anywhere you want it to be. And it, it takes a while to uh, figure out exactly what you're going to get because, you know, a thinner glaze, you get a different result from a thicker glaze. And it's more prominent in certain glazes. You just have to learn that. And you can't really tell until you get it out of the kiln. So that's a bit of a problem. It's a fairly complex thing, but you do get a, a, a huge advantage in a, a variety of results. I'm ready for the robin's egg blue. This is a copper blue, and it's a pretty beautiful glaze, but it needs to be on fairly thick. The most important thing to remember about spraying is to keep moving. I'm ready to spray the, the red in the center. It's kind of a sun aspect. If it's a landscape, it's, it'll be the sun. What I've accumulated here is a lot of overspray. So there's dusting all over that. And I want this to be a crisp thing. So I'll use a brush and I'll literally brush away some of the extra glaze. I'm going to clean this up a little more with this trimming tool, carve it out a little bit, and make sure I get a good, accurate circle. All right, here comes the red. So here we are, before and after the glazing. It's not exactly what you see is what you get, but you, um, you get an idea and you have to learn over time what this kind of thing will look like when the finished product comes out. Good luck with this. You can use any, almost any combination of glaze. Almost anything will work more or less well.